You had your cervical cancer screening done, aka the pap smear and maybe the HPV testing, and it came back abnormal. What did those mean and what do we do next? We're going to answer that in this video. Welcome back to the new school OBGYN. My name is Eric Schmidt. I'm a board certified OBGYN and remember it matters where you get your information and so make sure you're getting your information from a reputable source. Getting an abnormal result on the pap smear or the HPV testing can be scary. And so I see a wide range of emotions from patients when they're coming to talk to me or coming for consultation regarding their abnormal pap smears. These emotions can be range from fear, anxiety, uh, maybe even uncertainty when it comes to their results. Consulting and educating on pap smears is one of the most rewarding things that I feel like I can do on a daily basis. There are two main things we're looking at when we're evaluating somebody for cervical cancer screening. We're wanting to know HPV, is it there? What strain is it? We're also wanting to know cytology. Um, this is the brushing of the superficial cells of the cervix. And so what do those cells look like under microscope is what we're looking at there, which is also known as the pap smear. And again, we use both of these components to figure out someone's risk along with their history and what we should do next. Let's do a quick anatomy and terminology review. I'm gonna put up a picture here that's showing someone's uterus and the cervix down below on the lower part of the uterus. And this is where um, we're doing that brushing and the testing of HPV um, for the cervical cancer screening. And when we do that, it's reported as cytology for the, the pap smear. And um, an even better um, way to tell if these cells are normal or not is to do what's called a biopsy. And this gives us histology, okay? How we can see how the cells interact with each other um, and in a, a larger grouping. And that's the best way to really know how these cells are interacting with each other because some of the hallmarks of precancer and cancer are how they are interacting with each other. And that's what we're really looking at here. We report this on a one to three system. We call it CIN. Um, one, two, and three. And so uh, previously these terms were like dysplasia, but we label it one, two, three, one being a low grade cons um, uh, finding and two and three being the more high grade findings. And precancer or cancer would be beyond that. Okay, let's get into the results of what you can potentially have on your pap smear, okay? And so of course you can have a normal result and um, we would give recommendations for when you should have your next based on your history and this normal result. The next category would be unsatisfactory findings. Now this is happens occasionally and often is because there can be decreased cellularity in that area and so when the brushing or um, called spatula uh, collects those superficial cells you just don't get enough of them and this can be often because someone is maybe hypoestrogen or hyperestrogenic state and this would be like uh, someone who's postmenopausal, maybe somebody who recently delivered and is breastfeeding. Um, sometimes this can happen where there's just not enough cells to make a diagnosis at that time. And so there can also be obscuring things. Now this would be like the gel used to um, insert the speculum. Sometimes that can obscure the, um, the reading. That's why we often don't want to use too much, but we want to use just enough to make the procedure comfortable. Also, there's vaginal medications that can disrupt the reading or obscure the reading, as well as if someone recently had intercourse, that could obscure the reading. And so um, in that prior episodes, we talked about things you want to avoid um, uh, prior to your pap smear, and this is basically why. The first abnormal finding that we'll talk about is ASCUS, or atypical cells of undetermined significance. Now, this is the most common finding that we, or abnormal finding that we can have on the pap smear. It is basically looking at the cells saying that, you know what, they look a little uh, different. They don't quite meet the criteria for or the SIL or the um, squamous intraepithelial lesion that we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but they look a little irregular. It could be inflammatory type changes, could be infection, could be recent uh, aggravation of the cervix. And so what we do in some populations that haven't already had their HPV testing done, we test for the HPV. Now those 30 years and older, when they're getting their pap smear, they should be also be getting their HPV testing or we call co-testing. But we wanna know if that HPV is associated with this because that might help direct what we wanna do next. Because if the HPV isn't there, this might just be a inflammatory reactive changes not associated with any of the changes that could potentially lead to cervical cancer. The next we'll talk about is LCIL, 
or low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions of the cervix. Now these are changes related to the HPV and they could potentially progress, but however, in this group, I'm usually given an abundance of reassurance because the majority of these are resolving on their own. And that's up to 90 to 95% in some people with a healthy immune system, these resolve without any interventions. And so our level of, of worry with this, diag this diagnosis on pap smear is extremely low. But in some peoples, we might wanna take a closer look. And this might be with microscope or what's called colposcopy. Again, we'll talk about that um, completely in another episode because it's a whole nother topic um, that, that warrants discussion. Um, but uh, we're looking for these uh, low grade changes, potentially biopsying because sometimes the higher grade lesions can hide um, in this pap smear result. And so we would only know that potentially with biopsy, but we're for sure not biopsying everyone with this diagnosis. HCIL or high grade intraepithelial lesions of the cervix would be the next we're gonna talk about. This is a less common and is associated with high grade changes and these don't always resolve on their own and most likely will not with any interventions. Um, so um, again, the level of overall worry with someone coming into this isn't really high. You're coming in, you're doing the right steps, you're coming to get evaluated. And so um, we're definitely gonna wanna take a closer look though when someone has this diagnosis in any age group. Um, it definitely warrants colposcopy, taking a look with the microscope. And if it's confirmed with biopsies, uh, we'll definitely want to potentially perform the excision procedure to get rid of the, um, these high grade abnormal cells as they have a higher chance of advancing if left unchecked years down the road to things like precancer and cancer of the cervix. Other less common findings on the pap smear would be atypical glandular cells. Now these glandular cells usually reside higher up in the cervix and uterus um, and so we're detecting them on the scraping of the pap smear and we're going to want to investigate this further. This is generally in populations older than 40 who um, potentially might get this diagnosis um, or someone after menopause. Um, and so we want to evaluate not only with colposcopy, but evaluate higher up in the cervix and uterus with potentially something called like an ECC or a, a scraping up into the cervix canal um, or an endometrial biopsy to evaluate higher up in the endometrium and uterus. This is a pretty rare finding, less than 1% of the cytology results will have this result. Another one that's uh, pretty infrequent would be the ASC-H or atypical, atypical squamous cells um, potentially favor high grade. Now, somewhat similar to the ASCUS diagnosis that we first talked about, but they're also seeing features that are associated with high grade changes. Um, but they're not, doesn't again, quite meet rec criteria to call it HCIL. And so we basically treat this as HCIL um, because we're wanting to investigate it further because again, those higher grade changes do have a higher chance of, of potentially progressing. And so we wanna be thorough uh, and we'll likely proceed with colposcopy and other procedures to um, fully evaluate this. What are the take home points from this episode? Number one, don't feel too discouraged if you potentially get an abnormal, abnormal result or a positive HPV test. These things are very common. And what you just need to do is educate yourself and go in, talk to your provider and get fully evaluated. It doesn't always mean we're doing an intervention type procedure or a biopsy. Um, and so uh, just go in and get evaluated so you can know what your risk is of this potentially worsening in the future. We'll talk about the procedures colposcopy, the excisional procedures, which would be like leap or cone biopsy in future episodes. And um, talk about hopefully how we can make these better, not only by giving information, but how different techniques that we can use as providers to hopefully make the procedures more comfortable. All right, everyone. Thanks again for, for watching this episode. If you have any questions below, uh, we'll try to get to them. Um, otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye, everyone.